I just the point we'd love to say something then, eh? Um Well welcome back to the All About Ability podcast, everybody. It's been a while since you've seen me or heard of me or anything. But first of all, check out this amazing t shirt, man. Shout out to Sue Hilder, who is a really good pal of mine that got me this for my birthday and uh an album that I couldn't believe it. She's been asking me for a picture for it, so hopefully she sees this and is happy <laughs> is happy to have seen it. Um, a lot of people have been messaging me and asking where the podcast went and things like that and what's been happening because we had a really good run there for a few, few months or so. We got really consistent where we got a lot of good podcasts out and there was a lot of things going on that were positive and people were enjoying it and I was getting a lot of positive feedback. Um, and then life, you know, life hits you a wee bit. Um, Last time I'd done a podcast like this myself, I was speaking about goals that we had, you know, goals we had for the podcast and goals I had for life in terms of football and wrestling and things like that. What I give you is a wee update in terms of that kind of state of things. But, you know, when I started this podcast, it was the main thing was mental health and talking about, you know, things that we all go through and your own struggles, you know, sort of personal journeys and things like that. Um, and that was about two years ago now, um, more than two years ago now. And I remember when, when I was sitting in my house and pissed record, it was a very terrifying thing. And now, and now like three years later, you're sitting here in a studio, the green room, it's all fancy makes and people helping you with things. And it's just amazing how far this came. But when I, I actually listen to the first episode that we done the other day just to kind of remind myself what it was all about and why I was doing what I was doing and to, I, you know I was talking a lot about things I went through in school and being in the wheelchair and stuff and you know you kind of think that you've dealt with a lot of stuff but the pandemic sort of changed the course of my life in terms of where I wanted to be and what I wanted to be doing as it did for everyone and I think that it's affected us all in a very different way. For me, it kind of set me down a different route that I wasn't expecting. And for the past sort of few years, I've been dealing with a lot of inner, what you would call, you know, insecurities or, or just kind of things that you've had from bad experiences that you've carried. I think a lot of people can relate to that. You know, you just find yourself carrying things carrying this sort of pain and hurt that you have from different experiences over the years. And I've carried a lot of stuff um, and not really been able to let it go, you know. You try and help people as best you can and you end up being hurt and feeling like you're alone and feeling like you have to pick yourself up from the ground you know, constantly every six months or so, you know. And that can be exhausting and it can, it can tire you out. And it tired me out to the point when I didn't want to get out of my bed at times, you know, and people go through different things like that. And I, I've had a bad habit of being very harsh on myself and very, you know, what what's the word, you know, just kind of constantly thinking about the way things could have went rather than the way that things are. And... Because of that, you end up just carrying a lot of pain, like I said. And I think a lot of people do that in life where they just end up having to carry these things that turns them into someone bitter, someone that's angry at the world, and they never really turn back into themselves because they're just carrying this hurt and this pain that they feel from different things that happen to them. And I don't want to be like that, you know. I think the, the sign of a true good person and the sign of somebody that really truly wants to make a difference is that some you know someone that goes through life and goes through these hard times but it doesn't let them change them in a bad person and you know it's understandable how these things change people and there's been times recently where it could change me into somebody that was that just angry and bitter and I have been um, for a while and I didn't feel like I was ready to come on here and sit in front of my microphone and talk about mental health and talk about 
life and how things have been because I was carrying all that stuff and don't get me wrong I'm still working on things and things are still going on but um, it's just about remembering in those difficult times who you are and what you want to be doing with yourself and, and the difference that you can make and regardless of what happens to you if you stay true to your core values and wanting to help other people you will eventually come out of that hole and I've always been a big believer in you need to help yourself before you have other people um, but recently you know recently that that statement has been questioned and this is what this is where we're going to move on to the the football topic of things obviously last time we spoke like this I was talking about wanting to make a Celtic Pouch a football team and we had really good discussions with them I know that they're interested but I also know there's a lot of legality behind that it's going to take some time so what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a team and firstly show Celtic that I could do it which was one thing but the other thing was that you know we actually go for something that was true to the values of who I am and what this podcast is about and what the sport of football is about so I got in touch with FC United's um, prevention, FC United prevention against suicide. It's, it's a suicide prevention charity that you've probably seen, you know, a lot of the mainstream football teams wear their tops and you've seen them, different football players tweet about wearing their t-shirts and stuff like that. They are, they work a lot in the football community to, to promote suicide prevention and talking to people and it's it and, and I got in touch with them and they were really open and willing to let me make a team and make a poetry football team and call it FC United and that has been such an incredible experience we took players that didn't really had fallen out of love with poetry football had either fallen out of love with it or were going to just give it up and we brought them all together and it's just been such a fulfilling thing through what has been a really difficult period in my life the last few months um, which I know I come on here and I say that a lot but I promise you when I tell you that just when you think you've dealt with everything you deal with something else can come out of nowhere and hit you in a way that you didn't expect so for the last sort of few months it's been real tough real tough and doing this team just the fact that it's a suicide prevention charity and the great work that they do this whole team has came together and just watching their confidence grow and how happy they are we we went on in the league and played off of our first games against you know anyone that listens to the podcast knows about the Scottish Power Chair Football League and top teams in that and we played we played we played four games now and we played the top teams right away and I remember we had like three weeks of training three weeks training we went in and played the top teams we gave them really close games we didn't manage to get a win but we had our next games on Sunday just there and um, I know that they'd put in a lot of work it's been really strange for me because I've, I've obviously I've not been feeling that great because of things that have happened to you recently and you come in every week and you see these people that look up to you and want to do well for this team that you've you've made and they're working really hard for you and it's and we had this conversation with a one of the parents of one of the players that um came up to me and they said do you know I've never seen him look this happy before and he's been through a lot and it's just nice to see him look so happy and smiling and he came back for train one night and I was like I need to go and see what's making my boy so happy and that you know he, he goes on to say about how when you're a dad and you see somebody doing you see your son doing something that you thought they couldn't do because they're, they're, they're trying they're trying and they want to do well for someone that 
he's he, he told me he was like I've never seen him do that before. I've never seen him listen to somebody like this before. And and the way that he's taking it all on, and you could tell that he was getting emotional saying this. And you know, I'm sitting there listening to it, and I'm going, "Kieran, man, you need to get back on, back on the horse here. You need to get back going to." Back being at your best and back giving everything you can and and there was no way that I couldn't not fight for that, you know. It's for for all of the credit that they want to give me for I've helped them in some way. The level of which they've helped me through at this time has been incredible. They, they don't even know, you know, because I go in and I try and give them the best I can. Um. Uh, you know, I don't talk about how I am. I just I try and help them, and they can see that and the level of appreciation they show and work that they put in has just made me feel really valued and really feel. You know, when you can kind of feel the happiness around the place and the community. You know, publisher football when I first got into it was just about people feeling that they could believe in themselves. You know, everybody in the wheelchair gets, you get told about everything you can't do your whole life, basically. But the whole time you're, you know, and eventually in every aspect of your life, that could beat somebody down to the point where they have no belief, no confidence. And so just to give that back to people and see that grow in them has been a purely a really, you know, eye-opening sort of experience and brought me back to how I felt when I first came into poetry football and I think that's something that has been greatly missed for the past several years in the sport and bringing that feeling back has been one of the proudest things that I've done and we went there on Sunday played two really good teams and one of the teams that we lost in the first day we played them and beat them 2-0 two great goals from Conor Cahoon and a great play from everybody, just the way that we dominated the game, won the game, and then it was, to come in and win a game like that, um, when you've not played or trained that much together against the top team and beat them, and then your, our second game we're playing against a team in Lothian Wolves that have won the League Cup and beaten the best teams in the country, and we um, really, really dug in, showed on our side of our game, and you know, one of the things that was so special about that game for me was we're one nil down and they're all over us so they were they're all over the you know for a period in, period in the game and we really we stayed tight and we fought for each other we worked together and we fought for each other and we got that equaliser with a few minutes to go to pick up a really important um result for a one each and that was sort of the moment where everyone looked at us and went oh this team are really progressing here training last night everybody was just buzzing and happy and it's just been a really surreal experience for me and it's hard for me to really put into words or find the right words that do it justice to how that has felt over the past wee while. They have really kept me going and um, I have been. it's been a really big privilege for me to just see how it's all kind of transpired. So I'm, I'm really excited about where that's going to go and I think that the fact that it's... FC United, Prevention Against Suicide, you know, for us, we've all been through a certain level of struggles in our lives and we represent something that's really close to all our hearts. Anne Marie is a pl one of our players who's um, one of our older players and she's been playing this sport for a long time, but she has had close experiences with suicide and things like that which is a which is a story that I'll let her tell in her own time but she um she she came into this team and as somebody that seemed like she was just going to give up in the sport and she scored that goal to equalize in our in our last game with a few minutes to go and it was just very fitting that it was her because she's worked so hard and I know how much it means to her, so just wanted to mention that as well. Like, it's somebody that I'm very 
I'm very proud to see you get that moment as as anyone in the team. But, you know, I'm kind of talking a bit more somberly, I guess, because I've just been away since I've done one of these. And um, I've been really wanting to get back in front of the camera, talking in the mic and just getting things going again. Because there's a certain point, you just need to get everything, you know, you need to do it for you. You can only do it for other people. And too often have I, have I not done things for me, you know. So anyone that's interested in Power Football, our next game is in February, end of February. And I think that FC United are a great team to support, so definitely check that out if you can. Um, this podcast, you know, doing this means a lot to me. And the whole experience of actually how it's all developed has been it's something that has constantly kept me going the last few years. I don't want to give up on it, and I never have. And, um, but I think to have a couple of years in your life just sort of completely changed because of a pandemic and all these things, things are finally starting to get back to some sort of normality for me in some ways. And you're going to get, I think I keep having this thought, but I think, well, if I go past this and past that, I'll, I'll be, I'll be fine and then eventually indestructible, but life is unpredictable. And I want to say that anyone that's sort of struggling with things that they had maybe missed this podcast to an extent, um, I want you know, I want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm back, and I want to be more consistent and go into the new year with some momentum. And just, I really appreciate anyone that stayed loyal to this and, you know, stayed in tune. But if you're in a place where I was, where I'm thinking I don't really want to have to pick myself up from this again and again and again, you know, it's just about reminding yourself that you're, you know. You might feel alone, but you're never really actually alone. There's always somebody that cares about you. There's always somebody that's looking out for you. And although, like I said at the start of this, these past few years have been difficult for me, they've also been very, you know, important to my life, important to my development and being able to face your demons, face your problems. I think the, the further you run away from them, the more you're just going to continuously face deeper and deeper problems because the more you go away from it, the more it will get worse. And that's something you learn over this, this time is that you can't, you can't run away from it. Well, I certainly can't run away from it, but you can't run away from it figuratively, of course. And the more that you actually are honest with yourself and honest with your thoughts and put together why you feel how you feel. The truth of the matter is, it's probably because of things that have happened to you from so far, so far long ago that if you actually sat and addressed them and were like, right, how do I feel about myself? What's the way that I want to feel about myself? I don't know everything, but I know that in your 20s, like, everything can, can, can kind of be up and down. It certainly has been for me, but what I'm trying to say is that if none of this had happened, if none of the pandemic had happened or this podcast had happened, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't have known about me or, or had really had time to think about. I would have just been stuck in the sort of circus that life can be and you don't have time to think about these things. You just have to deal with them. And that's kind of been my biggest issue is I've had a lot of time to think about these things and try and deal with them. And in that process, I've, I've not, there's been times where I've not been able to. People people manipulate you and put you down and you need to deal with it. You need to just deal with it. Um, but through this course of this pandemic and just how these last couple of years have been, I had a lot of time to sit and think about all these things and I got myself into this way where I was thinking about them all in a negative sort of way. And I'm 26 now. And I go, that's, that's been a lot of time to think, been a lot of time to process, 
how I might feel about myself, but I think I've developed into a stronger, better person for that. And when every time that you come through something, you know, like I said in the podcast before, when I've done one of these, I say to her, you know, any time that you come through something, it makes that reward that bit more worth it. How I wanted to be a football player for Celtic, how I wanted to be a wrestler, how I wanted to do all these mad things that people thought I couldn't do. And how when I do all those things, people are going to look at it, look at me and go, that guy Kate had to come through a lot of hardship to get where he wanted to be. And that's still the case. You want to do it right away, but different things are going to hit you and you're going to have to deal with them. And, and I have. And I'm still here. That's the key, is that w when you're sitting there and you're being harsh on yourself and you're thinking, why couldn't I just do it earlier? Or why couldn't I just do it sooner? All that matters is that you're still here and you're doing it now. Because you feel that you've lost in some ways, but you're still here fighting. Which means you, you're always winning. You're always winning when you're still fighting. And there's no... It's always worth it. It's always worth it, even when it feels like it isn't. You eventually, eventually, you'll wake up one day and be like, it's worth it. Because you, because you can see how people, you can change people's lives in, in a positive way. That's why I was saying, one of the things I said during all this was talking about how I always felt like you have to make yourself happy first before you can make someone else happy, which is true, right? I get that. But what I'm saying is in this time where I've felt not too great, Helping other people feel positive and confident and motivated has showed me how much an, how much of an impact I can have on people's lives. And and then you go, well, that's something to fight for, you know. And I want to make myself, you know, I've always talked about wanting the world to see the best of me at some point. And I definitely feel like, you know, as much as there's a lot of things to do, Everything that I've been through over the past few years has just made me able, give me a stronger base to build on and be stronger for. And this podcast to me is about showing everyone that we all go through different experiences. We all are affected by things differently. But we are all human and there isn't anything new that you're feeling that somebody hasn't felt before. And if we can all connect through that, connect through the struggle that life can be and show each other that we're all similar in a lot of ways because of that, then really that's where differences and that's where this idea of being normal fades away because we realise that we all have that strength and, and unity, embracing our, embracing our differences where we're recognising that our emotions can be very similar. And that was what I've always wanted to do. And anything that I've been focused and really put my head down, this podcast has done really well. And I know that it can become something that can really be a, a light for a lot of people with disabilities, with mental health problems, with all these different things, just to just to know that they're not alone and know that we can talk about these things. That's what it's always been about. And that's what it will continue to be about. We're going to have a bunch of good guests lined up. I just wanted to come on here because I know it's been a while and I know everybody's wondering on what's been going on. Um, but that's kind of what my life's been like for the last few months. Went to Geneva, Scotland. We did really well. We got to the final. Um, there was a lot of tough things that were involved in that, but we did. We did well and uh, a lot of things were thrown at me that I wasn't expecting. But um, there was a couple of really big moments there for me and for the team and everything was just I ended the final on the pitch as a captain and I remember thinking you know I want to be leading Scotland for the next you know long way ahead and I'm only 26 there's no reason why I can't do that and I want to lead this sport into a new level of publicity and popularity because that's what it deserves that's what these people in this game deserve. This sport is just the best sport in the world for what it can do for people in their life overall. So I just want to 
stress how much of an important thing it is to me that positive football continues because I've always talked about saving my life as a young boy and it continues to do that all the time. But it just continues to remind you how special life can be. Because it, you know, it really can be and all that really matters in the world, the only thing that actually matters is how you make people feel and how you feel about yourself. Every other thing just kind of, you know, things are important. Money is important. You know, different things can have different values, but the most important thing is how you feel and how you make others feel because that's all that anyone remembers. And just seeing that and realising that has made me want to push on and pick myself up and, and really show everybody in 2023 how good I can be, how 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 much we can help each other and support each other through difficult times. So that's my my head's fully in the game and I want to just try and get things going again and, and, and make 2023 the most consistent one that I've ever had by just doing the things that I know that I do every day and doing it for me and for everyone else as well. So that's the goal. That's the target. And as we go on, I'm going to just get back more into my flow. And we will still be Tuesday. Um, I'm going to say around five o'clock. <laughs> uh, five o'clock being the goal. Um, but please, you know, bear with me. I'm not saying to you that everything's magic or I'm not saying to you that I'm going to be right on the ball with everything right away. But I do know that there is a plan. There are people that are great guests that want to come on here. Um, and I'm fully committed to making this everything that can be, to make myself everything that I can be. Um, if I have got great support around me, you know, obviously I probably mentioned Paul too much in this, but he knows how much he means to me and he knows difference that he's made to my life in the podcast and stuff like that. Um, so I don't need to struggle to go too much. But, you know, having the people like Dad and Connor that have came on two times now and they all just want you to do well and I've got a great family. They want me to do well and people that actually listen to me talking this microphone, it's crazy. It's, you know, that's, it's mental to me. Like, there's so many times in my life where just talking like this would be terrifying, you know? So, I wanted to do this to just get back in and just speak to you, you know, speak to you one on one and tell you truthfully what's been happening with me and I'm going to be all right, you know, and that if you're struggling now, you're going to be all right. And I'm never going to disappear forever, do you know what I mean? As long as I'm here, all about Valley will be here and I'm just really excited to get things going again. With that said, I think that, by the way, shout out to, shout out to, to Wolfgang as well, actually, because Wolfgang, is, Wolfgang has been helping me with wrestling training still throughout this time. And it's, again, that's also been another thing that's been really fun. Like I said, 2023, you have two goals, right? It's continue to progress with Project Football and have a wrestling match. Those are the two. Those are the two goals in my life for 2023. And I'm saying that now because when I say out lines of things like that, I feel like it makes me do it. Um, sometimes you just need to put your money where your mouth is. Um, and I will get, hoping to get the, the the new ICW World Heavyweight Champion, Leighton Buzzard, who was in here talking about how he was going to win the belt. He went and won the belt, so that was pretty cool. We'll get him back on. I recorded a great episode with a DJ called Frankie. I'm, I was going to attempt to pronounce her second name, but I just, it just, it's a bit of a tongue twister for me, so I'm just going to go with Frankie. Frankie, we told the story about how we met the, on the podcast that we recorded. We recorded a podcast, what was it, a month or two ago or something like that? And um, I wanted to post it sooner, but just the way that life has been, I, I didn't post it as soon as I wanted to. We had a great conversation. She's a, she's a DJ. And she's been a, she's done a lot of kind of crazy things throughout the world and, and it was a really good podcast talking about her and her own journey and just a really fun, outgoing person. 
who's also a journalist and does a lot of work for the BBC. So keep an eye out for that. She'll be our first guest next week. And this will be the first podcast that comes out, um, hopefully on Tuesday. Uh, but no, thank you. will be our first guest the week after that. And then we'll go from there. I know uh, Ravis Graff wants to come back in. So he'll, he'll be great if we can get him in soon. And I'll maybe try and reach out to a few of the people we've had on before. If there's anyone that you want to see on, then let me know. And hopefully Gredo one of these days is going to be able to talk to one of our fucking DMs, man. <laughs> <laughs> Calling you out, man. If you're, I met him recently at one of the ICW shows and he was like to me, uh, I'll come on at the end of like October or something like that. Well, mate, it's December. <laughs> it's December there. <laughs> Hello, are you there? It's, it's like, oh, honestly, I've been trying to get that going for like three years. So if somebody wants, to, if if you if if more than however many people listen to this, if, if there's anything you want to do to help me, it's get Gradle messages and get them to help that Keaton Bird with some of his podcasts, man, because it's, it's a pure nightmare. And I'm and you know that he's bad for applying when I'm saying that because I'm like one of the worst people. <laughs> For that, you know what I mean. So, um, but at least now we move back in podcasts, we can say that it's 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 become naturally in the Scotland scene anyway a lot more handsome. With all due respect to Dan Connell and Sean McDonald and all that, I think <laughs> I think I think that helped raise the value a wee bit. You know what I mean? I can say that because I'm in a wheelchair. Because it's like, what are you going to do? Beat, beat up a kind of wheelchair? Do you know what I mean? It's like one of those things that can get a bit more wide because it's like it's not as if they're going to come in me it's bad PR you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? see I'm starting to get in the flow of it now I feel a bit more relaxed I'm just a bit you know I've opened up on this kind of thing a lot a lot you know said a lot of deep things on all about ability and personal things and got visibly emotional and cried and things like that and it's like it's a bit it's a bit demotivating and just dejecting when you're just doing that and then you go through another bad time and you need to come back on and be like sorry guys did it again uh, and you just you get kind of tired of coming on and kind of spilling your spilling your guts out a bit um so just for that first wee bit there i felt a wee bit kind of scared to be honest to do that because it's not easy to come on to a podcast and just talk about how you feel about things it's it's, it's it's not as easy as people think it is sometimes and um especially when it comes to mental health it's like there's this very there's like a kind of talk about it that can be quite attention seeking or or just sort of people that use mental health as this sort of like a bargaining chip for views and likes and and to develop their own brand or whatever and that's never what I've been about. Everything that I say to you, everything that we talk about, you know, what you see is what you get. And I try my best to be honest about how I feel. And it's not about, to me, really, it's not about getting thousands of views or thousands of people or money or whatever. It's just about if 100 people listen to us and one person is helped by hearing me talk about things. And that to me makes all of us worth it. And if you go by that, if you go by what's true to you, then that can develop into something special as long as you're true to yourself. Um, and I know with more consistency and the more honest I am, it will just keep growing and get to where I want it to go. So, you know, I know that there are people that do those things that do podcasts for the views and for, you know, to kind of, share that story to kind of use their struggle they've been through to sort of exploit people and manipulate people and I want you to know that I'm not like that and never have been and it's very real to me all of this is very real to me it's important that when people listen to it they know that it's real and I just think I've been finding it really difficult to come back in here and be in front of the camera and just speak about it honestly because it's like because you just get tired of yourself and your own crap. <laughs> You're like, oh, here we go, you know. But don't be, don't be, the best way for me to put this is don't beat yourself up for falling because life is just full of falls. Especially, you know, if you are 
same age as me or roughly the same age as me and your 20s you know you're, you're going to make mistakes you're going to have to learn for them people are going to leave that you didn't want to leave um and it's all about growing and understanding yourself so that by the time you're 30 you may have some of this stuff out of <laughs> um so yeah I appreciate anyone that's taking the time to listen to me talk over these past few years and I want you to know that it's only going to get better for you but every time I fall I'm just going to come up and keep getting back up and keep going for it better and better so I'm really grateful for all your support and just know that there's plenty more to come for me um, and anyone from the FT United team that listened to this or anyone from that charity that listened to this I just want everyone to know that Pelagia football is the best sport in the world and I'm grateful to that charity for the support they've shown me and the players for the work they've put in and just how much of a difference that we can make together. So I'll see you again every Tuesday, five-ish o'clock and hopefully we'll speak again soon but thanks again for listening and I'll, and I'll see you soon.